joining me now is Colby Hall. He's a founding editor of Mediate. Uh, Colby, welcome back. Hey, good to see you, Trent. Good to be back. Yep. Uh, good to have you. All right, so uh, let's talk uh, about the current state of politics in media. So uh, obviously, big story today is um, Elizabeth Warren's team uh, saying that Bernie Sanders, uh, apparently, in their telling of the story, said that a woman couldn't win in a private meeting with um, uh, Warren and Sanders. Now, Warren did back that up, saying yes, that's what happened. Uh, obviously, some folks are finding that a little hard to believe, uh, given the current political climate. That it, not only that that Bernie Sanders would say that, given his record, uh, and given the fact that he had just lost to a woman and a woman had just won the popular vote, uh, but also because you would have to be politically moronic to say that to someone who is likely to be your opponent soon. Right. Um, uh, anyways, um, but what I wanted to ask you about is the media coverage because. Uh, if you cover that story just by itself, without giving the context of Bernie Sanders' voting record and his history of talking about <laughs> women's rights and fighting for women's rights, it might give a misleading picture of who Bernie Sanders is. If you you know if you've never heard of him or if you haven't heard of his record in the past, I never heard of right. him. It seems less likely in this case. But if you don't know his voting record, don't know where he stands on the issues, you might think, oh, it's a 50-50 proposition of whether he's sexist. That's my take on it. Curious what your take on it is. Well, um, you know, I, I think we have to separate between media and journalism. And sadly, journalism doesn't really exist in the way that it used to. It's primarily media. So when you would you, I think, rightfully criticize those who are sort of being unfair or only giving like sort of top line stories of what they've seen? They're not really journalists, they're aggregators, right? And, you know, I launched media, I, we mostly sort of answer the question, what have you missed? So, like, we're not, we do uh, some journalism, we do a lot of original reporting, but we also aggregate a lot of stories. So, when you hear, for example, Megan McCain on The View, uh, talking smack about Bernie Sanders and defending Elizabeth Warren, who's been on the view a bunch of times, or even anyone, you know, uh, MJ Lee at CNN who broke this story, um, they're not necessarily doing the thing that is they're supposed to be doing. They're not holding themselves to the accepted journalistic journalistic standards that are kind of this whole sort of story. He said, she said, is kind of absurd. And I think the backlash towards Elizabeth Warren has now been sort of greater than what I think most people have foolishly claimed to be. I mean, even Morning Joe, uh, Joe Scarborough said, like, this is, you know, he was incredulous. There's no way that Bernie Sanders, an elected senator who, you know, is a very savvy guy, would say something, uh, you know, so stupid. I do think also that. Um, Elizabeth Warren, to her defense, she's one of a handful of female senators. So her truth may be that, yeah, she's heard a lot of stuff and she heard it in a way that wasn't there could be there could be reasonable space between what Bernie intended to say and what she heard. But I really think that it all comes down to we're three weeks away from the caucus. Bernie and Elizabeth Warren, Bernie's up in the polls, and Elizabeth Warren really wants his voters. And so you know, it's politics. Uh, desperate times call for desperate measures. So that's, I think this is this is politics. And even though we don't want our, our favorite politicians, those who we believe with to play politics, everyone plays politics. And uh, we'll see how it flushes out at the end. Yeah, I do wanna agree with one thing you said there. Um, that I really think that there could be a misunderstanding. And I'm not saying that to be Pollyannish. Uh, I, I, having run a company, I know that there are misunderstandings all the time, and if you don't get people together in right. a room, they right. mushroom out of control. So it's right. possible that he uh, intended one thing and sh she interpreted another thing. It happens all the time in, in human behavior, so that's possible. But I wanna talk about the media's role here, um, because uh, you know I heard today, uh, and it's just on background, and you know, so I can't vouch for its complete authenticity, uh, but that, that CNN had been working on that story for months. Uh, which then makes me wonder, were they desirous of that story, um, of that to be true? Um, and uh, and so, um, and, and then that leads to the question, Colby, of the media's role overall. Because I'll tell you right now, I said on air that they would call uh, Bernie Sanders a sexist and every other name in the book, 
if he were to take the lead in the polls. Here we are, three weeks out, he's taking the lead in the polls. <laughs> exactly as right. predicted, the media has done uh, what I said they would do, not afterwards, but I said it ahead of time. In fact, a year ago, I said they'd get so crazed that they would call him an anti-Semite, and they've also called him an anti-Semite, even though he's Jewish. So did I get lucky, right. or is there a pattern here in the media? You got lucky, you're not that smart. <laughs> no, um, jokes aside, jokes aside um, you know, I, I think that's fairly astute analysis. I think that that's a fairly easy thing to predict that, you know, uh, the wind always blows harder at the top of the totem pole. So if, uh, you know, Bernie's get a lead of the polls, I mean, he's going to get the most critique. Uh, of course, there are sort of institutional biases. You know, uh, you know, I think a good friend of mine pointed out how sort of Pete Buttigieg is sort of the establishment support of corporate media. And Bernie is kind of the classic sort of internet supported kind of organic disintermediated uh, support. Um, that said, I think, you know, I've written about this extensively in a bunch of columns that um, the, the biggest bias that the media has generally is that of conflict, right? So uh, it's not necessarily an ideological uh, bias. It's one that is, you know, where where is the bleeding that will lead, so to speak? Um, where can we find the fight? And this sort of fell in their lap. And as I said, you know, Bernie and Elizabeth Warren both are fighting, you know, Bernie's got 20% of Iowa poll, uh, most recent Des Moines uh, Register poll. Uh, Elizabeth Warren, I think, is at 18%. You know, they're cannibalizing each other. And if 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 one of them were to get the other, that would be you know stunning. That would be 38% of the vote, basically. Um, but I will say that you know I think we're in this weird space where you know journalists are so eager to report on something that they've heard. Uh, M. J. Lee reported this uh, for CNN. And to their credit, uh, just before, like at seven o'clock hour, Erin Burnett on CNN revealed and sort of admitted that uh, she reported this basically purely from Elizabeth Warren's take. Now, is that sourced, or are we? Can we really source someone's opinion? No. Um, but they sort of admitted that they just sort of like went with Elizabeth Warren's kind of like I wouldn't say propaganda, but her feelings. And in a postmodern world. Uh, Feelings are news, and uh, again, I, I, I don't know if uh, I, I think this was a short-term punch spike of news for Elizabeth Warren, but I think as more news comes out, uh, people that are like saying this, uh, and it's, it, I, I wouldn't surprise me if this doesn't end up being a net benefit for Bernie for all the reasons we just discussed. Yeah, and, and look, to be fair to Elizabeth Warren, I, I don't. I think it's probably more than just her feelings. She thought she heard Bernie Sanders say that, and so that's. Uh, well, I, think, I think the Washington Post. The Washington Post said, I think it was the Washington Post that reported that, uh, according to two sources that were apparently aware of that, uh, that uh, what it was that he said is that he thought that Trump would play dirty against the female candidate. Uh, which he certainly did, and that was likely interpreted as you know a woman couldn't win. Again, at this point, we're splitting hairs between two you know sort of admirable sort of civil servants who whose hearts are in the right place. Like this is not, you know, this is where we sort of like uh, you know people sort of eat their own, right? Um, but uh, you know the media coverage isn't necessarily they're not going in depth about this. They're just doing surface level. He said, she said, which has sort of led us to the milieu that we're in. Politically. Yeah, I actually want to ask you about that. We're not really looking at that. Sure. Yeah, I actually want to ask you about that. I think the right way to to report, especially if you're one of the bigger organizations, would be to give the voting record of Bernie Sanders and the voting record of Elizabeth Warren on women's rights and what they have said and what they have fought for throughout their history. That would be great context for this story, but we almost never get that, and it's deeply frustrating. But I want to pick up on uh, on something you said a little bit. Uh, ago, because I think it's really interesting. In a sense, the uh, this campaign is uh, is also um, a contest between the internet and mainstream media. Uh, if if Bernie Sanders wins, it appears that the internet is stronger than mainstream media. Right. Whereas if right. the mainstream media continues to attack him, which they've done as long as he's ever been on the national stage, and takes him down and puts up uh, someone like Buttigieg, which they've had. Honestly, in my opinion, a love affair with, uh, and have not well, been very critical of. Uh, then, then the corporate media wins. Um, what's your take on on that battle? Well, I, I, mean, I think uh, you uh, summed up what I said so brilliantly. Uh, but uh, you know, I, Buttigieg has been sort of the, the the new fresh face, a new story. Um, 
you know, he will get to a point where if, in fact, he gets you know sort of brought up to like the highest level, he'll eventually be brought down. Like he's he's in that sort of like uh, you know the hero narrative arc that is you know still on the upgrade. Um, and I think Bernie suffers a little bit with the media relationship in that. You know, and this is unfair to him, but the story isn't necessarily new. Like he did get decent coverage in 2016, probably because everyone sort of took him for granted, and then later realized, like, oh my God, he's got uh, sort of uh, grassroots support that that we've never really seen before. But now in 2020, we've already told that story, and you know, the news editors, people that run newsrooms all are wildly distractible, right? There's Everyone suffers from ADHD. And so Bernie's not necessarily a new story, which is, isn't serving him, nor is it serving their audience well. Um, uh, and, you know, I, I, I do think that corporate media, like people are lazy. They look for the things that sort of will keep status quo and keep, you know, I've said this a million times privately, but Cable news is funded entirely by, not entirely, but a great portion of uh, advertisements on cable news are by big pharma. You see so many sort of pharmaceutical ads that all come from the current state of healthcare, right? So why would anyone in the cable news business who's making a ton of money off that want to support or elect an individual that would jeopardize this sort of, you know, goose that laid the golden egg that is big pharma? So uh, you know, there is are some inherent sort of biases. It's just self-preservation to do that. And, you know, the whole digital revolution, democratization of, of media that is the internet right now, um, I think we're still in like the second or third inning of this. I don't think, you know, like I think the cataclysmic sort of epochal change is still super duper early. Um, and how, like, inevitably, it will be the internet candidates that will sort of run roughshod over the corporate candidates is that 2020? Mm. Is it 2024? More likely. Like, I think that's the inevitability of all this. And as you see, I mean, the success of Young Turks is an example where more and more people are cord cutting. They're getting their news and their information from sites like yourself or conservative sites that compete, say the Daily Wire, and are not tuning into Fox News, CNN, MSNBC. And as long as there's a responsibility of the, of the coverage and there's a sort of a, a commitment to smarts and in you know good information, uh, as relative as that could be, I think we'll be better off. I'm not sure everyone is. I think that there are people that are doing sort of misinformation uh, by design, willful misinformation, uh, especially with corporate uh, uh, media. But you know, if it came down to Mayor Pete versus Bernie, I, I think that the, even the corporate media would sort of like eventually go all in with a more established candidate, which in this case would be Bernie. So it'll be interesting. I don't think we'll get to that. I think it's really just sort of a Joe Biden versus Bernie thing at this point. But, uh, you know, we'll see. The caucus is in three weeks and there's a lot of green. There's a lot left to play. Yeah, so I agreed with 90% of what you said until you said they'd go in for Bernie. <laughs> that seems un <laughs> un unbelievable. And, and I don't remember Bernie getting the hero arc back in 2015, 2016 as he closed a 60 point lead. It was, it was a mini, it was a mini hero arc. Be really fair. mini, <laughs> microscopic. There you go, there you go. <laughs> All right, Colby Hall uh, from Media. Thank you for joining us, really appreciate it. Jack, it's always great to be here, thanks for having me. The TYT Plus app is now available on iOS and Android. Download to get more TYT content at tyt.com slash app.